Jürgen Habermas uh, from his uh, book, a collection of essays. I gave you in the paper, I gave you um, the, the source on naturalism and religion. You see, Jürgen Habermas is not uh, suspicious to be a, 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 a committed Christian. He is not speaking on behalf of the church. He used to be one of the uh, philosophical leaders of the left since the 60s and uh, brilliant thinker, maybe the most important German thinker at uh, the time today. And uh, in one of his, uh, already in 2002, in one of his speeches on uh, how, when do we have to be tolerant, he gave a um, definition of tolerance. What is the virtue of tolerance? Well, as philosophers are, there it's always a little bit complicated. I give you the quote and uh, try, you try to understand what it means. Um, the challenge posed by tolerance consists in the fact that although the mutual rejection of convictions and practices is based on good subjective reasons, there is no reasonable hope of a cognitive resolution of the disagreement. I will say, well, that is the, the fact. That two people or more people who have different views, and they discuss and they try to compromise or find a solution, and at the end they find out we cannot reconcile our views. Either or. We try our best. We, we try to find the way, but there is no way. It's neither or, it's a, it's a contradiction. So that's the fact. And then he says, thus the persisting disagreement of believers, those of different faith and unbelievers, must be uncoupled from the social level if they are to continue to interact peacefully as citizens of the same polity. Thus, reflect a bit on that, what it means. I feel this is very, very helpful to our understanding, what I call a mature understanding of tolerance today. So if you, if you reach agreement with, with a person of different opinion, then of course there is no need of tolerance because you have an agreement. That's what uh, Jürgen Habermas says in another, another uh, part of his speech there. Uh, if you find uh, what the other people say a nice thing, then you don't need to be tolerant because you accept it as a nice conviction. So that is kind of compromise of agreement. The problem comes up if you do not find any uh, reconciliation, any kind of agreement, any common ground. What to do then? You say, we do not agree, that is either or, but we decide that we will continue in our controversial debate on interaction, even publicly if necessary, but peacefully. We will do it peacefully. We will not use the police, we will not have the intention to throw you out of the country, or put you into prison, we will work on developing a peaceful interaction and in public debate. So that's what Jürgen Habermas uh, considers to be the political virtue of tolerance. And I'm convinced this is badly needed in our society. We cannot find, we will not find agreements and there are positions which cannot reconcile. And you can, will never find a compromise. But we, when we do not want to, to establish a totalitarian system using force and police and detentions and so on, we have to act tolerantly by, that means peacefully, with respect. But that means at the same time, we do not ask each other or force each other to be quiet. We say we need an open society, needs that everybody takes a public stand, speaks up. And that includes us as Christians. And therefore,
therefore I do no longer accept it if I speak out for Jesus as the truth that I am blamed to be to uh, intolerant. No, I say I'm not. I take a stand for what I feel is the truth. And I have my good reasons. But I promise you, I will fight for it that my atheist or whatever or Muslim opponent will have the freedom to speak out publicly. And both of us are not allowed to use violence in any way. That's the limit. No one is allowed. I am as a Christian, I'm not allowed to use violence, but the Muslim is not allowed, and the atheist, and all have done. Well, the 20th century is full of what the, the violence the atheists, uh, with millions, have died in concentration camps. Not only of the Nazis, but also of the communists. So atheism has been brutally enforced on the people. Not very successful, as we see now. But that's the, the way we need. We need the, public, the political virtue of tolerance, peacefully accepting each other. But having said that, I just want to underline that as, as Christians, tolerance is the minimum of an appropriate behavior. Jesus expects us to do much more. He tells us in Luke chapter 6, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who ill-treat you. I think that is the real, uh, real challenge of today. I talk, had discussions in Christian circles quite often when I found out sometimes, and I regret it, that even Christians said, well, how can you love your enemies? That is impossible. They use violence, and you give in. Well, I say, if you do not trust Jesus, and if you do not do, uh, do not uh, uh, you do not obey Jesus, why do you expect that other people believe in you? If you prove that you yourself do not believe in him, I do not follow him. So we have a, what we call a credibility gap in the Christian in Europe. Our history tells the opponents that we are ready to use violence if we have the piety, power to do so. We did it for centuries, unfortunately. It has hurt the Christian credibility. And today, we get, they confront us again with this. And do no longer believe us. If you say, no, we love you. Well, I said, prove it. I'm convinced that today, in communicating the gospel of Jesus, it does not depend on the strong reasons and the brilliant rhetoric or whatever. To overcome and to bridge the credibility gap is that we as Christians are to prove that we believe what Jesus said, that he has not only commanded us, but empowered us, empowered us to love our enemies. Only if Christians accept that again, we will see Christian congregations losing their fear. In so many Christian groups, today you see that they are afraid of Muslims. And out of fear, they respond in a very special way, which is not uh, according to the gospel. We do not trust. Obviously, it seems that we do not trust Jesus and say, well, if you say that we love our enemies and pray for them and do good to those who ill-treat us, we, we do not trust that this is the way to life. Yes, we say we trust you and we will do so. We will love. This is much more than tolerance. Uh, in a society, secular society, you, you cannot expect the majority of people to love the enemies because they don't have the power, they don't have the experience, they don't have the source. It's not just a virtue, it's not just a moral 